Greg Arjun from FTC Team 9794Wizards.exe asks, on the control hub, there is both a USB 2 and a USB 3 port. Is there any reason or recommendation regarding this? Um, so the processor that we used uh, has both USB 3.0 and USB 2.0. Um, we wanted right. individual, individual USB buses, so you'll obviously mm -hmm. get a slightly higher uh, bandwidth. Uh, mm -hmm on the control hub using the, the 3.0. So if you're using an HD camera or a really high resolution camera, you might get a slight performance advantage using the 3.0, um, but it's we expose peripherals based on kind of our design. So both of them are gonna work, but the 3.0 is a little faster. All right, All right. thank you. So Arjun from FDC 9794, he was also asking, how will teams wire the encoders as they have a six pin connector, but the rev expansion hub only has four pin ports? Is there going to be an adapter cable released soon? The adapter cable comes with the encoder. Okay, awesome. So the so the encoder itself will come with the adapter cable for um, comes with a direct six to six. It comes with the six to four uh, pin JST, and then it also comes with a adapter so that teams FRC teams can also plug it right into a uh, the Robo Rio if they choose not to plug it into the uh, Spark Max directly. So just oh. you know, that's for the FRC people who might be watching that. <laughs> but uh. As with a lot of our products, like we wanted to make sure that we got these out in time so that teams could kind of take a look and see what's coming. Uh, I know there's a lot of excitement about this product specifically. Um, we have a whole bunch of documentation that we're finishing up. And before the products are available for sale, there will be a lot more documentation for all of this, how to wire them, how to use them in code, like those type of things. So keep, keep stay tuned. Um, there's a little like notify me button on, on all of our products that are not in stock. Subscribe through your email in there and you'll get a notification the minute they're available and that'll also be a cue to go check out documentation as well nice. All right, so Alexander from FTC team 12563 is asking which motor from rev do you recommend for both strength and torque? So that's our HD hex um, okay. You know, with most uh, with most uh, motors in FTC you have a 500 series motor these are the most powerful motors that are out there. Um, you know, everything speed to torque ratio, you, you, you can't have both, right? So the higher the power, mm -hmm. the actual motor itself, the more you're gonna be able to get out of it. Um, the way that we kind of stack up and we recommend manipulators, we say like, this is your drivetrain motor. Um, and for any really, really heavy or fast manipulator, this is where you wanna go. Um, for other stuff like your internal, your intakes, your kind of lower load stuff, core hex mm -hmm. all day. And then for all your little, all latches and small stuff, um, using our servos as either continuous rotation actuators or as servos. So between those, so it's like heavy duty application, HD hex, then core hex, then servo is kind of the way we look at the actuator stack. Hmm. All right, perfect. All right, so next up we have uh, Ishan from 9794. He's asking, what is the purpose of the double extrusion? Um, is it just stronger or are there other benefits? Double extrusion. All right, so um, double extrusion is cool because um, it's less uh, flexy, so it's it's okay. definitely a lot stronger. That is a that is one big key. The other thing that's really nice about this is that it actually has three slots on a side. So um, mm -hmm. one of the challenges with our plastic linear motion system is you always get up the situation where the uh, I guess I'm going to go up here where like the things want to pass each other but on a single mm -hmm. piece of extrusion, they can't pass each other. Well, now if you use this as part of your linear motion system, they can slide past each other on the same bar. So even though it's twice as wide, um, you can actually build cascading linear motion systems in a, in a tighter package. For those who don't wanna go down the ultra slide package, this is another way. Um, and also if you're just building a chassis, you'll get some added uh, rigidity out of a double wide. So, all right, uh, perfect. Really cool. And then um, Alon from FTC team 9421 asks, what is the point of the belt and pulleys that are available if they don't center to center without tensioners? So per perfect question. So um, this year we released uh, belts and pulleys um, with the hex shaft, makes them really easy. But as he pointed out, yeah, like it's not um, on our channel, um, the center to center distances with belts have to be perfect mm -hmm. or they fall off. With chain, you can take a link out. So a couple things. So. Um, we, we like to choose things to integrate into our system that are industry standards. So this is GT2 okay. three millimeter. It is a very standard belt. Um, it's very commonly used by FRC teams all over the industry. So when you have a three millimeter pitch belt, 
and a 16 millimeter pitch hole spacing, there's only some very small crossovers. Um, mm -hmm. Belts run great with tensioners. So we wanted to provide this really like easy way to do belts because I think mm -hmm. that teams will benefit from the, the efficiency, from the mm -hmm. noise, a lot of reasons. The other thing that's really interesting about channel is that remember, since you do have the slots on the top of our, mm -hmm. of our channel, you could put your motor in the slot down to a belt and still slide it for tension. So, Oh, wow. Okay. There are plenty of ways to actually tension your belts within mm -hmm. this system. Um, mm -hmm. And we really felt that the adding an easy way for teams to use belts far outweighed mm -hmm. the, I need to have a perfect center to center distance. And we do have a, um, an idler bushing that mm -hmm. allows you to put it in one of the holes and get your tension perfect for whichever length belt you want. So you do need to add that little idler in there if it's going inside the channel, but if you're going on the outside, you can just use one of the top sliders to get your belt perfect tension. Awesome. And uh, one thing I would add to that, I know you mentioned like there's a lot of advantages to belt, and I know many six, like really good teams this year, especially gluten-free, used belt as part of their drivetrains. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. All right. So the next up, we have another question from Arjun uh, from 9794. Uh, he's asking how strong are the 15 mm, 15 millimeter hinge kit? Uh, is there any sort of load rating for that kit? That's a, that's a good one. I got to put, I got to add that to our uh, list. First of all, hi Arjun. And, um, and thanks for all the <laughs> questions, but, um, yeah, we got to, we probably got to do some testing and add that the hinge kit that we offer is really designed to be flexible. It's mostly your low load hinge kit. So it's like, okay. there's always like, how do you mount? A hinge in this way to do this thing there's always a kind of a thing there so um it's not your i'm going to pivot my entire robot onto the the lander hinge <laughs> but it's the perfect thing for how to make a really compact joint if you want to deploy an intake or you want to you know mm -hmm. swing out an arm um like in uh, relic recovery when you want to knock the jewels off or something like that that's kind of the perfect load but yeah we can add that to our uh, our testing list we love um we love uh, that type of destructive testing. So we'll put some load ratings on that in the future. All right, All right. perfect. So now we're on to our last two pre-audience questions. Um, Alexander from FTC Team 12653 asks, um, which RGB robot build is your favorite? And I think he's talking about the Blinken controller, but I might be wrong. Yeah, so I, I, if you're in the chat, correct us. We're kind of interpreting this question too. Um, the mm -hmm. Blinken is our LED controller. Um, it's designed to be really simple. You plug it into a servo port on the expansion hub or PWM port on the RoboRio, and there's like a hundred like predefined crazy things it can do. We have a video. There's a ton. Um, I really like Fire. There's a there's a one called Fire. <laughs> I, I'm sorry, I really don't know what the number is. I'd have to look it up. Um, if you look at uh, my FRC team, the one that I mentor is uh, Team 2714 Barbecue. So we have a meat themed. And if you look at the corners of our robot from last year in any of the videos, you'll see like we have little fire flames in the corners, and that that is fire, right? So um, I'm going <laughs> to say that's my favorite one. Um, but they're all special in lots of different ways. Okay. All um, right. All right. So next up, we have another question from Arjun, 9794, and he's asking, with the Ultra USB hub, is it made so you can connect one camera and an expansion hub to the phone? Uh, is there a way to connect multiple cameras using the Ultra USB hub? So, okay, I have a, I have a prototype over here, so you'll have to bear with me. Um, mm -hmm. So the Ultra USB hub is designed to fix a problem that we have uh, seen over several years, which is um, how to provide power to a USB camera, right? So that's number one. Um, on, a, on a robot, and then also to give a better performance on the driver station also, both powering game pads and whatever. So the point of the, the Ultra USB hub has two full-size A, and on the input side, um, what you'll notice here is this is behind a, a user removable panel. Um, it comes with a couple different cable harness sets. So you're able to decide, um, I want a full-size USB, right, because I'm trying mm -hmm. to use it as a regular hub, um, you also have the ability to make this an OTG cable. So on your driver station side or on your main robot connection, you can choose that. And then on the power side, um, it comes with one that has the standard PWM port. So you can do uh, five volt aux power on from your expansion hub to give you a powered USB hub, which is nice. And then the other one that it comes with is uh, the uh, to USB. So on your driver station, you can plug this into a battery bank. 
So um, oh, okay, okay. it's really it's really not designed to allow you to do two cameras. Um, there's nothing mm -hmm. to say. Really, what it's designed to is on your robot. It's really designed for your phone into the hub as your input, and then the output side. One of them goes to the the expansion hub, and one of them goes to your camera with a power injection in between. Um, on your driver station side, it's plug it to your phone in OTG mode, and you can have your two game pads right there. So it's not for everything, but um, ESD is always an issue on USB hubs. Um, we found that build quality like wildly varies. And since we know everything about the control system, um, we mm -hmm. said, let's just build our own USB hub that we know won't die. It's ESD resilient. It's designed right. to take the right type of power. Like that's what this product is. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thank you to all of our co-executive producers keeping fun loud, live, and independent.